Hello, so this video is how to change out on your bench scale from the 900 BSL or SSMS to an 8000 rappel. So the first thing you do is turn it over. So yeah, whether you remove all the screws, normal screwdriver, lift the actual top off, and you see, let the cable out of the way, red, green, yellow, white, black and the label correspondingly to EXE+, SIG+, HD, SIG- and EXE-. So this is a cable that comes out and goes to your column, through your column, and to the bench scale itself. So for you it's important to get a mini flathead screwdriver and you're going to start loosening up all these connections because we want to actually remove it. You don't need to remove the red and black cable because this is the black power supply cable and the battery we're just going to take out the load cell from it so unscrew all these so i would loosen up all the screws and all those and i will see if you could just pull them out so what you do is now i could put the cover back on and i could switch counterclockwise and then pull out the load cell cable so this is the low cell cables. The connections are going to be similar. But next, we could just close this up, put this to the side, because now you have a working 900 BSL, which you're not going to be using. And then now we're actually going to hook it up to the 8000 repel. Okay, so it's the 8000 repel, so you got to turn it over. And the tricky part is, is this screw, this screw, this screw, and this screw are normal cross-threaded screws you can use a normal screwdriver but this one up here and this one up here need a very special tool looks like this and you're able to loosen up connection because we do have to open this up to get inside to actually wire it in this is our ip69 rated so you're gonna actually have to open it up and then you'll see this twist counterclockwise cable will do this hole. Move the top two screws and be careful because it will fall down the faceplate. And you see how I turn it over now. And I can see all the electronics here. So this is what's interesting. This is where you're gonna connect it to. And if difficult to see I'll bring it closer. Labeled. So this one E plus is the red cable. We don't use six wires so you can ignore the SE plus. S plus is green, S minus is visible. It's a white one, SC minus we don't use an E minus is the black cable. So what you're gonna do is hold on to this and take your bare wire that we just removed. Or if it would ship like this, then you just take the cable, wire it through. Let's see how it goes through this end and pull it through. You don't have to tighten this all the way because if you do then you won't be able to pull it anymore. So just loosely tighten we can still move it in and out if you have to. You will be adjusting anyways. Now we're gonna wire it up. See I'm still here, the face plays down. It makes it much easier to see. You'll see the E plus. So this is not too difficult. You'll take your red cable and what you're gonna do is take a mini flathead and you're actually gonna push down on this end and feed the red cable through this end. A little difficult. You can see it's securely in and I can't pull it out. So the first one is the E plus. The next one says East SE plus. This is a four wire bench scale or load cell in the bench scale. So you skip it and then you go to the S plus, which in this case is the green cable. So we'll skip one. If it doesn't work, you'll know why. Red, skip one, 
and then the green which is S plus and you'll see how I can't pull out the green cable the red cable next it says S minus which is my white cable Make sure it goes all the way in. See, I don't see the metal tip of it, and I can't pull out the white cable. Next is SE minus. Ignore SE minus, and then the last one is the E minus or black. So push it down. Put the cable all the way in. So now I can't take it out. So if you need a closer of how it looks. See the first one on the left, and I'm looking at it from the perspective of faceplate down. It's labeled E plus, red, SE plus, ignore it because it's four wire. Next is S plus, green, white, S minus, then SE minus, you ignore it because it's four wire, and then E minus is black. If you had a six wire, then you put the other two cables here, but I don't. And the last cable, the shield, we don't have a place for the shield, so I actually don't connect it at all. It doesn't actually affect it because it's not being used. So what's going to have to happen is, you see how I have a lot of cable still sticking out, so I could actually pull the cable, so not too much, so I could actually be able to close it easily. And put the two screws back in at least so at least it could hold up the faceplate so you can see I'm putting here putting here this section is how to calibrate the 8000 repel in this situation so it's already hooked up You can see the weight of the indicator was on it. Anyways, so now we're actually going to calibrate. So turn off, you know, tap on the on/off button, and tricky part is going to hold down the menu off button. I'm going to keep trying. I take a couple tries, but wait for the set. Now press the set button. Now it's F. So you go down. Now you're F1. So F1 will tell you the amount of graduations you have. So you can see I press down. So right now it's at 25,000. So in my case, it was a, what I'm trying to set it at is a 500 pound capacity or sorry, 250 pound capacity by 0 0.02. So if we do 250 pounds divided by 0 0.02, I got 12,500. So I'm gonna set that. It's 12,000. 500 okay set so next and this is optional f6 is a filter setting right now set to auto i want to test it out see if the filter works this helps with the fluctuating up and down if it's fluctuating too much it might help but typically you might be pushing the amount of divisions too far and trying to get an accuracy that's not really possible for the specific load cell uh, i said 12,500 divisions this load cell maybe five ten thousand so pushing already a lot so that's why the filters might be needed or not but need to test it out to see f9 so f9 will tell you how it's going to count so one two five In my case i'm 0 0.02 of accuracy so that's why it's two four set go to f10 so i press down arrow to go into f10 so you can see you can cycle through it, you might just see it however you want. So what I'm going to set it at is 0 0.00. So the previous setting was a 2, so it's going to be the last digit. And then point, so it's going to be 0 0.02 accuracy. That's set. Now it's going to go to F16. So F16 is a zero calibration with no weight on scale. So I actually have to remove my 
propel indicator on the scale and make sure it's totally clear. You see there's no weight on my scale right now. On F16, so I can press down and you can see the internal data. That's just a normal fluctuation. You don't know if it's a bad load so or not. Just make sure nothing leaning up against it. Anyway, so I press set. So that sets to zero calibration. So zero is out whatever it's on the scale. Next one, F17. So this is where I'm going to use my calibration weight. So in my case, it's a 250 pound scale and recommended 10%. So that's good. That's 25 pounds. So I'm going to use 30 pounds. The more the better actually. So you can see, just don't forget the decimals right there. So it depends up to you if it's like, as I say, a 500 pound scale, then you recommend to use at least 50 pounds, but it can use more. So I'm using 30 pounds test weight, so I'm not going to place the weight on the scale now. Place three 10 pound weights on there. And I'm just going to go down here. You can see how it's still placed there. I try to put it near the center and then press the set button. Might take a couple seconds. Okay, so now it's asking for a second calibration weight. This is like a linear calibration. So this case would be like if you have a heavy, even heavier weight, then you could do that. Um, I'm not gonna do it. So I'm actually gonna remove my weight and use zero pounds as my calibration weight. So remove the weight now. So you can see I'm back in normal weight mode and there's no fluctuation, 0, 0.00. So I can start adding my 10 pound weights. Let's see, 10 plus or minus 0 0.02 is fine. I'm adding 30 pounds now adding 20 but now it's 30 pounds see very stable not fluctuating very good more important key is making sure that your feet are all leveled and making sure that your the floor is not bumping anyway see I'm gonna add a 20 kg weight so 20 kg will be 44.0809 so I might just round up to 44.10 so you can see 44.10 so let's leave it for a couple seconds to see if there's any fluctuation. If you see a lot of fluctuation, it could help with the filter setting, but most likely it probably is a bad load. So it was fluctuating without a spec, for in my case 0 0.02. So it's not fluctuating at all, but let's see it's going up and down 44.08 or 44.10 uh, or 12. Then I have a bad issue, bad low, so I should say, and it needs to be replaced, but so far it's good, and I'll say calibrate to 8,000 repel.